Hello, this is David Montiel. I'm a staff scientist for the PRISM Center at the University of Michigan. I would like to thank the organizers of this conference as well as everyone who is watching. The title of my presentation is PRISM's PF, a high performance phase field modeling framework to simulate microstructure evolution. And my goal today is to give you an overview of the PRISM's phase field framework developed at the PRISM Center, including discussing performance, applications, and integration with other computational packages. I would like to start by thanking the Department of Energy for funding, as well as NSERC, Exceed, and Advanced Research Computing at the University of Michigan for computational resources. I also want to thank some people who have been involved in the development of features or applications of PRISMS PF that I'm going to mention today, starting with Nicole Schumann and Susan Gentry at UC Davis, who worked on the recent update for the PRISMS PF NanoHub module, Shenji Yao, who led the development of a new alloy solidification application, and finally, Kubrick Karayajis, who is involved in the ongoing development of the implicit solver functionality. Okay, so before I get into PRISMS PF, I would like to give a brief overview of the PRISM Center Integrated Framework, which has the goal of enabling accelerating predictive material science as part of the Materials Genome Initiative. The approach is to establish a framework comprised of multi-scale open source software along with experiments, integration protocols, and the Materials Commons imp Information Repository, which facilitates data sharing and collaboration. As you can see, phase field simulations are central to this framework, since they require thermodynamic and kinetic data that experiments or atomistic models can provide. And we use them to predict microstructural evolution, which in turn can be useful for experiments and other computational tools such as crystal plasticity finite element. Okay, let's talk about the motivation behind the development of PRISMS PF. Phase field models have a wide range of applications in simulating microstructure phenomena. I'm just showing a few examples here. For this reason, there really isn't a typical governing equation for phase field models. Instead, the governing equations need to be selected on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the physics we want to describe. Because of this, we have a large variety of formulations and terms. So a challenge for a phase field modeling framework is that it needs to be flexible enough to incorporate different governing equations. A third challenge is that simulating a large physically representative system is almost always computationally intensive, typically requiring tens or thousands of cores. Because of this, many studies are often done in 2D, but accurate simulations in 3D require strong computational performance. Given these challenges, the PRISMS PF framework was designed under four guiding principles. First, that its computational performance, including parallel scalability, meets or exceeds that of typical phase field codes, as well as that of most common open source codes. Second, that it accommodates a wide variety of phase field models and applications. Third, that the interface for creating or modifying governing equations is simple, quick, and separate from the numerical implementation. And finally, that it is open source with a permissive license so that it's available to everyone and advances can be shared by the community. So let's go over some of the main features and capabilities of PRISMS PF. This is the link uh, to the website uh, where you can get an overview, access the repository, instruction manual, etc. This code is based on the DL2 finite element library and some of its advanced capabilities are the use of a matrix-free approach, which employs efficient, explicit time-stepping by eliminating the need to diagonalize the, ma the mass matrix. The capability to solve for an arbitrary number of couple partial differential equations. Multi-level parallelism, that is, distributed memory parallelization, task-based threading, and vectorization. So from the perspective of the user, this all happens in the background. The use of adaptive meshing, which is very useful when we have regions in space, such as interfaces, where a high resolution is required, along with regions where fields vary slowly, typically bulk phases, uh, when which don't need uh, to be resolved as much. Next, we have a method for explicit nucleus placement based on a nucleation probability function that the user can define. A functionality for grain remapping, which can significantly reduce the computation time in grain growth simulations by assigning a small number of order parameters to track all grains in the system. 
And a recent capability is the Newton Picard solver, which allows us to solve nonlinear ordinary differential equations at every time step. So an example of this would be solving for the equilibrium electrostatic potential as the system evolves. And on the right panel, we have some of the functionalities and features that make it user friendly, including a simple interface, which means that the typical user only needs to modify a few files in the application directory, and it is relatively straightforward to do so. A detailed online user guide, a total of 27 built-in applications, a simple Docker-based installation option, a recently upgraded NanoHub tool for educational use, integration with the Materials Common Repository for easy data sharing, a new suite of post-processing scripts for results analysis, a new series of short video tutorials on YouTube, which we plan to keep expanding. And I also want to point out this uh, reference to an article that we published about a year ago, where you can find a lot more details about the framework structure, features, performance, etc. Here I want to just give a brief overview of the structure of Prism SPF. We have the core library, which is the backend part that performs all of the operations such as generating the mesh, applying boundary conditions, applying initial conditions, and doing the calculations at every time step. It is designed so that a typical user will not have to interact with it. Then we have the applications. Each application has a directory that contains a file to input parameters and simulation settings, as well as a few other files where the user can set the governing equations, boundary conditions, initial conditions, and post-processing expressions. This was designed so that no knowledge of C++ is required to use an application, and only minimal C++ knowledge is required to create a new application. Moving on to tests, we have a suite of unit and regression tests, uh, as well as a continuous integration with Travis CI. And the purpose of this test is to ensure that Prism SPF continues to work properly as new features are added. And finally, we have post-processing scripts, which are Python scripts for data analysis using the Visit CLI. And I will come back to this scripts later. Let's talk about performance. As you may remember, one of the guiding principles for the development was that Prism SPF computational performance meets or exceeds that of typical phase field codes and the most common open source codes as well. So first I want to show a comparison with a finite difference code. This code was written in Fortran with MPI parallelization, uses second order central difference derivatives and explicit time stepping. We use this code to simulate a simple scenario of two particles growing in 3D according to couple can hilliard allen can dynamics. We ran the same simulation uh, in Prism SPF and compare the results with finite difference for the same error. By this, I mean the error with respect to a highly resolved simulation in time and space. And in this table, you can see the comparison. If we use Prism SPF with linear elements and uniform mesh, finite difference is much faster. But once we get to a quadratic mesh, the performance is comparable, although finite difference is still a little faster than Prism SPF. However, once we go to adaptive mesh and cubic elements, Prism SPF is more than tenfold faster. Okay, regarding other open source codes, we compare the performance between Prism SPF, Moose, PyPy, and AMPE for a 2D simulation of solidification in a pure material. This is one of the benchmark problems developed at the PF Hub community. You can find the, you can see the link on the top. Uh, and uh, in summary, we found that one, the Prism PF calculations required three orders of magnitude or fewer of normalized core hours than AMP and PyPy, while having similar or lower degree of error. Two, the fastest calculations using Prism PF and Moose have similar computational cost and tip velocity error. I should add that for this comparison, we only included results uploaded by expert level users. So in conclusion, we are pretty confident that Prism PF is competitive in terms of performance. Now I want to show you a few applications that showcase the versatility of Prism PF, starting from spinodal decomposition and coarsening, nucleation growth and coarsening of particles, grain growth, and the interaction between magnesium neodymium precipitates. Uh, this last figure also shows a pretty good agreement with experiments in terms of morphology and relative orientation between the precipitates. 
Continuing with applications, on the top we are showing the morphology of the corrosion front in a simulation of galvanic corrosion. This part is an ongoing project to investigate the microgalvanic effects of second phase particles in the corrosion of magnesium alloys. On the bottom left, we have the formation of a precipitate depleted zone that forms as a consequence of having preferential nucleation along the grain boundary. And on the bottom right, we show particles featuring strong interfacial anisotropy after they have evolved from an initially spherical shape. The reason they have different shapes is because each particle has a different form of the anisotropy function. Now I want to move on to some of the most recent features of PRISM SPF, and I will discuss some of these in upcoming slides. First, the Newton Picard solver, which I previously mentioned. We also have two new applications, one for corrosion and one for alloy solidification, a series of video tutorials, some updated and new integration tools, a recently revamped NanoHub tool, and a new phase field community of practice within Materials Commons for sharing simulation results. Let's start with the corrosion application, which was released a few months ago. This application features the most complex model in a pre-built application to date. It uses phase field and the smooth boundary methods to simulate the evolution of a metal electrolyte interface during corrosion. The numerical solution of the model requires solving coupled partial differential equations for the order parameter, which describes the metal, uh, or we can use multiple order parameters for polycrystal, the domain parameter, which describes the electrolyte and marks the region where ionic transport is allowed, concentration of each ionic species in the electrolyte, which are governed by a combination of diffusion and migration transport mechanisms, reaction current at the interface, which depends on the value of the electrostatic potential at the interface, and finally, the electrostatic potential for which we need the nonlinear solver. And now I'm going to show a movie of a simulation where, starting from a small pit, the corrosion front advances into the metal. We are showing the system in two parts. On the left panel, we will show the motion of the metal electrolyte interface. And on the right side, we show the concentration of metal cation being dissolved from the metal into the electrolyte. As you can see from the right panel, the concentration of this ion is larger at the bottom of the pit. And as a consequence, the front starts to slow down in the middle of the pit compared to the sides as the simulation progresses. Moving on to our most recent application, which simulates the solidification of binary alloys. This application is based on the solidification model of Echeverria and collaborators, which introduce an anti-trapping term to correct for spurious effects that arise from using an artificially large interface width. And by these, I mean considerably larger than the physical width of a typical solid liquid interface. As with many other phase field models, the free energy contains a gradient energy term, a double wall term, and in addition, we have a third term, FAB, which accounts for the concentration and temperature dependent correction of the double weld according to the phase diagram. And in the bottom, we show two snapshots of simulation results obtained with this application, one for directional solidification in 2D and one for equiax solidification in 3D. Another recent development is a series of tutorial videos that are available in the PRISM Center YouTube channel. I will post the link at the end of the presentation, but it's also quite easy to search for it. We have uploaded three tutorial videos so far, one for installing PRISM SPF, running a pre-built application and visualizing the results, another one with a step-by-step -step guide of the installation of prerequisites, namely DEAL2 with the MPI and P4's dependencies, and visualization software packages, either Visit or Paraview. And a third tutorial in which we create a simple new application to simulate the evolution of a circular seed near its critical size. In this example, we go through each of the application files and edit them accordingly. We plan to continue adding tutorial videos, which we have examples on how to create new applications of increasing complexity with the goal of familiarizing the users with different features of the framework.
Very briefly, I would like to talk about a NanoHub application based on Prisms BF. You can access it via the link shown on the top of the slide. This application calculates the 2D equilibrium shape of a precipitate, taking into account the effects of anisotropy in interfacial and strain energies. It is targeted for classroom use. The idea is that students can understand the effect of each of the parameters by setting different combinations of values. And it was recently optimized to include a low fidelity option, which produces a faster preliminary calculation. Here are some of our recent efforts towards integrating Prisms PF with other computational tools. First, we have a recently upgraded script to import microstructure from Dream 3D using the Visit CLI. This feature is very useful for grain growth simulations. We have new post-processing scripts that take the output files from Prisms PF simulations and automatically calculate useful properties like face fraction, interface area, and domain count. We have plans to continuously add new scripts that meet the most common needs of the users. Finally, the newly developed CLI for Materials Commons will facilitate creating scripts to automate the creation of projects, upload simulation results, create and publish datasets, and edit communities of practice. Finally, I want to briefly talk about the community support for Prisms PF. We have an online user manual that is continuously being updated, an online message board, which has almost 100 registered members and where users can ask for help on specific issues. We also recently created a community of practice with the goal of facilitating users to share face field simulation results in the form of datasets. Some of the ongoing and future development plans include new applications. I will briefly talk about these in the next two slides. Then for performance improvement, we will continue with the development of an implicit solver option. We plan to have an adaptive time functionality, add an option to implement non-zero Neumann boundary conditions, and to implement GPU acceleration capability. And finally, for integration and use, we will build an integration tool with Thermocalc for direct access to databases that contain thermodynamic and kinetic information. We will also create an integration tool for loading free energy surfaces from CASM, which is another PRISM framework. So let's move on to the ongoing application development. We are working on the development and implementation of a model to simulate green growth with the effect of stored energy. In particular, we are developing a model that can simulate grain growth under the effect of non-uniform dislocation density throughout the system, coupled with the evolution of the dislocation density itself. This model would then be applied to simulate static recrystallization. And for this application, we will import results for grain microstructure and dislocation density maps obtained using crystal plasticity finite element in the prisons plasticity application. Prisons PF will then read these inputs and simulate nucleation and growth of recrystallized grains using the stored energy model I described in the previous slide. And this will involve including a method to nucleate recrystallized grains depending on the dislocation density field. With that, I will conclude this presentation. Here are some links and contact information that may be useful if you are interested in Prisons PF either as a user or as a developer. Thank you for watching.